Okay guys, um, this is a, a quick video for those of you who have had a, a rubbing mark around here or are getting a lot of noise when you do tricks on it, go one-legged or you're just getting a rubbing noise which occurs for no apparent reason. Later on through ownership, doesn't do it when it's new but it does do it later on. Now, the answer to this is very simple. Um, it is one of those and that is a two mil washer which sits in here um, I'll do some close-ups in a minute and that's that's the answer to the whole problem of the rubbing now when you go one legged and stuff what's basically happening is you're putting a load of pressure on the imagine the shells out here a load of pressure on this um, and it's pushing it in or that way whichever trick you're doing and then it rubs on this part. Now, it isn't a design flaw. It's made very, very compact. The reason this thing isn't five foot wide is because it's intentionally made compact. But the travel distance between this and the shell can be anything from one mil upwards. So at the minimum, it can be one mil. So you've only got to have um, a lot of pressure pushing on it or several crashes to move this just one mil and this problem can start occurring. So the answer to why it happens um, in some instances, not all can be, because you just knocked it, the casing, by one mil, or you've bent something slightly by one mil, and that's all it takes. This two mil washer will sort that out. And all you need to do, I say all, is get it down to this stage. Not as far as this, by the way. Um, go and see a previous video. It can be on either side, but it is predominantly uh, the right hand side in the three cases out of the hundreds I've had. Um, it's always been the easy side. The other side has a cable running through it, as you can see there. Uh, so you need to feed that either through a socket. Now, a standard socket, the connector won't fit through the end of the standard socket. Um, yeah, and the issue with that is, um, if you imagine you've got a socket, you feed it through, you put it on, where do you put the, the wrench? You can't, because that's come up through the center. Um, in that instance, we have had this made up, which is very easy to do. If you know someone who welds, uh, it's a 21 mil socket, and it, that's 20 mil, what, 21 mil both sides anyway. Um, and what it allows is the cable to go through, feeds through here, and then once it's on, you can crank it off and job done. So that's the answer for that side. We also use that tool for this side. Now you can see slight wear on this one. Only just slightly there, the white patch. Um, and I shall show you now how to get around that. But as I say, you just need this washer. I'll put the dimensions in the description so if you want to see which washer to get. But it's two mil thick, so really you just need something that's going to be wider than the, the axle. So let me try and get this a bit closer so you can see the ins and outs of what you need to be doing. Okay, as I explained earlier, you need this washer, you need a 21 mil socket and ideally some form of wrench on the end because these are on pretty tight. You need flat thick screwdriver, such, and a rubber mallet. As you can see here, You've got a lead lug there and there. What that does is it holds this nut in place, make sure it's not gonna come undone whilst you're riding. Um, if you left them out and you left this loose, you would find your right foot plate or left, depending on which side you're doing, will wobble left to right. Um, you'd know straight away something was up. It's not inherently dangerous. Uh, it only is if you kept on riding, 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 um, ignoring all the warning signs. Um, so that's what this is here for, for safety, basically. Now, those need to be removed, and that's what you use the flat screwdriver for. So I shall do that now, and you'll get an idea of what you need to do. Okay, you get the screwdriver, and you wanna be putting it under this lead lug, and levering it out, and same both sides. And you just basically need to work at it until you get it out. Um, you can easily mark up this aluminium here, um, but don't worry about it too much. Um, so it's very difficult to do one-handed, so I will try and do it 
but if I can't, I might just come away from the camera and actually try and do it. It would usually be on a workbench as well, so this actually makes it quite difficult. There you go, that's one of them out. And same again for this side. There we go, that's that side done. So now you're actually free to undo that center nut. You need to take no, yep, sorry about that. You need to take note of these plates here. The, they're two separate plates. And as you can see, just see the base of the nut there. It's sat on a washer and it's pushing down and that's on a taper basically. So as you tighten that up, it clamps down and compresses, making it even more secure. That's the position of those plates. If you forget where they are or how to put them back in, that's what they should look like. So keep your eye on that. And then this is typically, oh, by the way, an important point to remember is that cable. If you're doing the other side, and you've taken the whole thing apart, which I don't recommend, you need to try and protect this because you'll push down on that and it could potentially damage this cable. So you don't need to strip the nine bolt down this much to do it at all. So leave this whole white panel side on, all with leg support and everything, and then you can just flip it over and you can be quite rough with it. In this form, it's quite you've got to be quite gentle. Um, so just be really, really careful. I would recommend not stripping it down that much as it is now. It's just that we happen to have this lying around to do the demo with. Now, this is real tight. As you can see, I'm holding it between my legs, but even so, it turns. So what you actually need to do is put something in there, like a screwdriver. This is all at your own risk, by the way. If you do cause yourself a personal injury, this is advice only. Um, put it in there, and then that's what I do. I clamp it down with my leg, I'm holding it in. I've done this before, so I know that screwdriver is strong enough. And then you just turn and snap and then it's undone and there's not many threads on it and there it is so that is the nut that comes off make sure you keep the lug safe and nut safe let me just quickly show you what that looks like in there so that's what you've got in there uh, these are the two plates i was talking about one at the top one at the bottom this section's flattened here so you've got thread here and here, but flat here, no thread. And what you need to do is just put a screwdriver in there underneath these plates and just loosen them off like that. And then the whole thing becomes loose. You wobble left, right, left, right, and it comes off. Simple as that. And there you have it. Now you can see here, there is already a washer on there. You need to leave that in place and it is as easy as grabbing your other washer and putting it on there like so. And then it's a reverse of the process you've just done. But let me show you this bit more in depth first. So these plates, they will slide out. Now it's released. You can see here the taper. Now these plates sit in that taper. And because, oh, because there's no bar in it, they're sitting low, but they actually will be pushed out to the side. Let me do it with one, it'll probably be easier to show you. And it will actually sit about here somewhere. And as you tighten it up, it compresses down to about there and you can't go any tighter. And that's what, it, you know, in turn, that's pushing that into the axle, the flat edge of the axle for extra security. So what I do is when I'm putting them back together, is put these in like so and then put it back on with them on and use your hands just to separate them out and you'll see is to just double check that that is snug there's no gap between the new washer you put on and the old washer that was there and then you just need to put the nut back on Doo -doo -doo. don't use the socket wrench straight away you need to try and feed this on by hand to make sure you're not going to cross thread it. You cross thread this and you've written the motor off essentially. So there you go, that's screwed in by hand enough. If the washer isn't two mil, you get too thick a washer on here, 
there will not be enough thread on this nut. And as you tighten it up, it'll slip and it'll, it'll shred the threads on the axle. So you need to ensure it's no thicker than two millimeters. Um, you can get a 1.75 uh, or any thickness really. Um, try smaller first, see if it corrects your problem. Don't be tempted just to whack a big massive washer on there and hope for the best because you're more likely not to be able to tighten this up enough because it needs to be very tight and it'll slip as you tighten it up and you'll probably hurt yourself. So try it at the 1.75 uh, mil washer first and then work your way up to two. I happen to know that two fits onto this. Um, so start with 1.75 mil thickness of a washer. That's what you want to be starting with. Right, and then with this set exactly the same again, but in reverse, obviously. So you tighten this up. And it is just about fighting it. <laughs> Just to get it in. Right, so you tighten that back up. I say usually I'd have this on a workbench, but for filming purposes. Right, I've tightened up as much as I can. Do it as tight as you possibly can. And then you end up with this back in its original condition, plus a washer. Now, you will notice something that these lugs, unless you're very, very, very lucky, don't fit back in, let me try and get this for you, back in to where they used to. So one was there before, which is right on the point of where that nut is now, and one was there, which is right on where the point is. That's because you've added a washer and this isn't turning around as many threads as it was before. So you basically need to hammer them in. Now they are lead and the alley part of this is fairly pliable, although super strong. Um, and you could basically got to work those in. And what I do is I push the corner in like that first. And I will then try and show you now what to do. Different angle is required for the camera. Okay. As you see, my top's come off. It is hard work. Um, but it's incredibly easy to do, um, as long as you've got a few tools and a, a little bit of mechanical knowledge. Um, but this video will sort you right out. Now, this here is sticking out. So what you need to do is, I use a rubber mallet, which doesn't give you the maximum amount of force you could possibly smack into this thing. But, it's an important thing to remember, if you use a metal hammer and you smash this in as hard as you can, you can actually damage and dislodge some of the internal components of the motor. And then you've written the motor off. Um, so he's been incredibly gentle at this point, but also, obviously, you've got to sort of exert as much pressure as you can on this lug. Otherwise, it doesn't go in. It's not that kind. Um, so what I do is I try and position it as best I can on the flat part of the nut, like that. And then I push this in. Here, so that's now in to the corner. Let's see if we can get a bit of a close wrap there, obviously. So that's what I've done. It's, it's kind of right in position of the flat on the nut. And when I'm talking about the flat, I'm talking about this part here, that part there, that part there. You know, you get the idea. What I'm also doing, you'll notice, is I'm leaning it against my body. Now, when it's on the worktop, it's a lot higher up, and I'm actually leaning it into my chest, which I can't do at the moment, but I'm leaning it to my chest. I'm putting that in there, and then I'm whacking it with the, with the mallet. So, but I'm going to do it here. It's not good to have this. I'm actually leaning it on a concrete floor. Don't recommend that. Put it on a cushion, something soft. You're trying to mommy cuddle this thing as much as you can. Put, and I'm putting it between my legs now. Um, so what I'm doing now is not ideal. I can't show you any other way though. So for you, table height, try and lean into your chest. And then it's got a little bit of give as you hit it. And the rubber on the mallet will help this as well. And then you just basically tap it in. You are done. Okay, nice and smooth, back where it should be, and you do exactly the same with the other lug. And I'm not gonna bother, I got that privilege with this point, um, to put that back in there. So you do exactly the same, you dip the corner in, and you smack it back in, and then it's gonna hold, the, uh, hold this nut in place. And that's all good. 
So, what you then need to do is rebuild it. Um, spin the wheel before you turn it on. Spin it around real quick. And if it's making a knocking noise now, not a rubbing noise like it was before, but a knocking noise, you may have dislodged something in the motor. That's bad news. Um, but if you can spin it and it doesn't make a sound, you just nice whir. That's all good. Then obviously, put it all back up. Get up, turn it on when it's on the floor. Get on it. Try and test ride it. And hopefully, if you do a one-legged thing, the rubbing's gone, which it definitely will be. Um, and that's, I think that's pretty much it. Just when you're hammering those lugs back in, just try and soften the blow as much as possible. Um, and you just keep working at those lead lugs. And you, you saw how it went in. It was a couple of hits and it was in. And that's pretty much all you need to do. Uh, okay, I hope this has helped you do that little mod. It's essentially a mod. It's, it's not usually required unless there's been some sort of knock, as I was explaining to start with, or you're doing one leg of stuff exerting pressure on a single pedal. Cheers, guys. Bye.